thank the organizers for the invitation and for putting up the, well, first the PhD school and then this workshop. So yeah, as Samir announced, I hope he, well, my talk is supposed to be part two of what uh, Val was telling you before, uh, essentially, this paper, so before lunch. Uh, however, Val pretty much said everything about our paper. So what is left for me to do is to just more or less uh, give interpretation, talk, you know, I won't discuss in detail any particular calculation, but I'll try to give you a flavor of uh, uh, maybe where it's going, the, the super gravity localization, the black holes. Um, and I'll also use a bit of field theory interpretation and in particular, uh, mention some things about the micro canonical and grand canonical ensemble of the field theory uh, from our paper with Francesco and Alberto. Uh, and then I will not refer to, to, to these uh, main papers that I'll be using localization, the quantum entropy function of SEN, then the, the, the main uh, philosophy of the localization in supergravity, uh, and also the, the topologically twisted index. So this would be the, the, the background that. Uh, by now, after the lectures and all the, uh, well, the lectures last week and even most of the talks this week, you already know everything about those, essentially. Uh, okay, so I just want to, to motivate, talk, or start thinking more. Uh, what could, could uh, everything mean in terms of for, for quantum gravity? So what we do. Um, so in reality, the, the good thing of, of supersymmetry localization and of, of the supersymmetric black holes is that we do have um, a lot of um, access to exact calculations and to, um, to, to results that, that we, can, we can rely on both in field theory and in gravity, in a sense, mostly because of ADSC, of course, and, and supersymmetry. So one thing that I would like to, this particular word, word that I have written and is maybe more uh, you know, philosophical, I, I would say maybe we can think of gravity on, on ADS2, so essentially for all the supersymmetric uh, black holes that it's been talked about, we can think of it as some sort of integrable structure in gravity. So I believe that there should be, um, that eventually we should be able to uh, calculate everything solve completely gravity on, on ADS2 when you have supersymmetry. Um, but okay, this is just a, a feeling that I have. Of course, you can object. A and uh, well, do ask me questions at any point, so you can already object now. <laughs> uh, but uh, so this is my, my motivation. I would just like to, to try to think what it means on, on, the, on the gravity side, and what we can do on the gravity side. Uh, but okay, so. so of course, as, as before, we know black holes are statistical ensemble of degrees of freedom. And we have the, the entropy, which, is, which should be the logarithm of a, of a particular integer uh, that depends. So this integer should depend on the asymptotic charges of a black hole. Uh, but in particular, the, the question that I would like to, to it will come back in, 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 in this presentation, is the question, what are the microscopic states that make up the black hole? So it, let's, well, I'll try to think not only what is the final answer of, of the entropy, but what are the states that come in the black hole? And this is something that I think we can uh, give some answers to already, even if incomplete and not really in quantum gravity, but uh, at least in field theory, we, we do have some idea. So uh, I will try to, to talk about that. And the way to talk about that, as you already know from the previous talks, is with the ADS to near horizon geometry. In particular, I will be talking about uh, black holes that, that have less symmetry and correspondingly less supersymmetry than the asymptotically flat. So I'll be talking about asymptotically uh, anti the sitter black holes of different kinds, all of them having common the ADS2 near horizon. Uh, and they are generically, they preserve this sort of uh, superalgebra. So they have U1R symmetry, unlike the SU2R of the, of the strominger Papa story, where we do have, uh, well, you can say we have a, a good 
understanding of what, what the, the states making up the black hole are via the, the brain constructions. So for now, I, this is not the case in, in, in the ADS black hole story, but it would be good to, to also eventually have that somehow. Uh, so, and the main, the main essentially uh, two, ADS-CFT, uh, which means that we have a supersymmetric n equal to two quantum mechanics. So it's the, the usual RG flow interpretation of ADS-CFT. We start with some uh, asymptotic ADS space that has a, has a conformal field theory radio that is deformed. Uh, there is an RG flow. And near the horizon where we, we recover the, the ADS-2 symmetry, uh, we essentially, it means that this, well, it's an RG flow across dimensions, so you can think of it as a quantum mechanics flowing to a conformal point. So this is the, the dual field theory picture, and uh, how, how would you formalize this? So from the, from the field theory perspective, essentially, uh, we have a, a one dimension of quantum mechanics given by Hamiltonian that actually depends on the asymptotic charges of the black holes, the magnetic charges in this case, um, whatever they are. So there could be different asymptotics, but, but you always will have eventually some sort of quantum mechanics that can be phrased in terms of the deformation parameters at the boundary, which are the magnetic charges. Um, and so in the grand canonical um, ensemble from, from the field theory point of view, um, you can define this index. It's a, it's a Witten index with some extra uh, flavor symmetries that are allowed. Uh, and, and in this ensemble, the expectation value of the extra flavor symmetries has the interpretation of the electric charges of the black hole, essentially. Uh, so, okay, so this is a clearly supersymmetric quantity. Yeah. At the moment, there is no uh, trace to the minus f minus one to the F, means that we are calculating something protected. Um, in fact, the, the value of the, so essentially, this index just calculates the, the zero, the, uh, well, the, zero, the ground state of this quantum mechanics. Um, okay, so what you can do also from here is to, is to go to the microcanonical uh, partition function. Um, again, we are still, this is still supersymmetric, so, um, this is just uh, essentially the for uh, your, your, you insert this, uh, this part, the e to die q i delta. So the, the delta are these uh, fugacities. So they are parameters that, that parameterize your, uh, your flavor symmetries. But these are essentially in the microcanonical ensemble traded for, uh, for the electric charges. So they are the, the chemical potentials for the electric charges essentially. Um, and then the, the final answer in the microcanonical ensemble is an integral over this uh, fugacity's delta, wh whatever the measure is. I haven't specified it here yet. Um, and then of, of the, it's the integral of the uh, grand canonical partition function. Here we, we, again, it's all supersymmetric. So what you have to do to get to the entropy is to assume that there is no cancellation between bosonic, bosonic and fermionic states. So clearly, there is no a priori reason to do that. Uh, it's, the two quantities are not immediately related. What turns out to be the case in, in many examples is that uh, actually uh, they are related. And you are essentially, we can, we, can, we can show that at large and for various theories, the index is uh, giving you the, the Bekenstein-Hawking entropy. So this uh, assumption works in many cases. In some other cases, it might not. I will not uh, rely on this uh, too much in the talk, but that, this is just essentially a, um, a way to, to, to prove that at least in the large N, what we are computing uh, supersymmetrically via localization or any other way is the, is the correct thing. It does count the states of the black hole. And this certainly can be, can be proven properly um, in, the, in, the, in the large end limit. And in this case, so, so if, we, if we assume, if you make this assumption of no cancellation between bosonic and fermionic states, 
um, what you can do it, it, from the microcanonical ensemble is just do a saddle point evaluation. Uh, so large n is, is large charge limit, which means that you just take, um, so you take uh, essentially, you make this, you, you, the saddle point evaluation of this integral just tells you that you have to extremize um, this quantity. So upon extremization, when you plug it in back, you get the black hole entropy. And, but in particular, since this is the leading charge, you get the Bekenstein Hawking entropy. So this BH stands also for Bekenstein Hawking, uh, and not just for black hole. <laughs> yes? Oh, this is very complicated. Uh, I cannot, it's a, it's a, so in, in, in the particular cases that I'll be talking about, there are square roots of square roots of, so the simplest case when you have one magnetic charge, no electric charges, it's something like, so Alberto wrote it uh, on the blackboard in his lecture uh, last week. So it was something like, um, I don't know, P minus some, some coefficient, there is another square root with another p plus another coefficient. It's a, it's a complicated formula. Uh, it doesn't look suggestive, really. Uh, so what I will use is, is much more suggestive form than, than this. So that's correct. It's, it's um, Let's see. So it also depends whether it's magnetic or electric charges and in which case, but uh, so typically, typically yes, you can, you can take this to be precisely correct, but uh, uh, someone can so correct me if I'm wrong. Some of the charges is, is, is bounded, so it's a number. Right? So uh, the, the sum of the charges is bounded, but, but the question is whether the field theory charge and uh, the superiority charge are equal up to Newton constant. And this is usually the case. So then the Newton constant is the large and, uh, yeah. Um, all right, so, um, okay, so this is the, the, the story when you, when, when you assume no cancellation, but, but I will not do that too much. So what I, I just want to come back to the question of what are the states making the, the black hole. And so this is not answering that at all. But I'm just uh, starting with an easy example. So I'm starting with, uh, with uh, free theory. So I said it's an n equal to quantum mechanics, right? Let's take the simplest uh, possible n equal to quantum mechanics and give you an example. What are actually the states of this, uh, that, that this supersymmetric index is calculating? Uh, <coughs> so the easiest is to have a gapped quantum mechanics. So there will be these real masses that come in, uh, in the Hamiltonian. And the supersymmetric ground states are given where uh, in, in are the ones that whose Hamiltonian is equal to, to the, well, real mass times the, the labor symmetry charge. Uh, so, okay, this is an example with free chiral multiplet. So it has a, well, as you can see, here you have these two um, bosonic generators, fermion. Uh, this is explicitly the, the Hamiltonian. This is the flavor symmetry charge. And you can see that uh, essentially this infinite number of states, so spin up is when you do not have a fermion and, and, and when you have the, the essentially one of the bosonic creation operators acting on this state. So for any value of n in this normalized uh, tower of states, um, you would have that h minus sigma j is zero, which means that the index is uh, counting over the states. They all come, because they're all bosonic, they come with the same sign. And the answer is, uh, after summation, is this one, which is not particularly telling you anything, but, but just tells you that you can do that. Uh, in fact, you can, you can do the same for a free fermion multiplet. And uh, there you only have one fermion. Um, then you have two states possible, and both of them obviously satisfy that h is equal to sigma j. Uh, so the answer is actually the inverse of the previous answer. But that's also, I mean, it might have some meaning when you, when, essentially for a, for a free complicated n equal to quantum mechanics, you would have a, some, a number of free chiral multiplets, free fermion multiplets, and 
and longer multiplets that whose index actually you can show that it's one, that it, they don't count anything. They just count the, the, the vacuum in, in the longer multiplets. And then these would be the states that you count on the, on the field theory. Of course, this is not a, I cannot give you an example where this corresponds to a black hole because this is weak coupling and, uh, you know, this means that I, I should know some, some quant, I mean, quantum gravity string theory black hole and how it looks like to, to match with this weak uh, coupling. So it's just a flavor of what a state might be in this quantum mechanics. Uh, in reality, this is what you do. So it's strong coupling. You have to do localization to count, in principle, this sort of states, of course. So there is no description of these states anymore. Uh, well, let me just mention that here I, I have put these real masses just to, to regularize and make things simpler, uh, because here the, the, essentially the states are, are discrete. If you do not add these real masses, you still have a proper n equal to quantum mechanics. You would not have this uh, discrete spectrum, so it's continuous, but you can still make sense and, and calculate and find that uh, the index is the same. So when in, in, in these answers, when you take the limit of the sigma going to zero, you can still recover uh, the same um, calculation, also in the massless case. So it's not necessarily true that uh, you have a, a ground state and, and a discrete spectrum. But even if it's not true, the index makes sense, you can calculate it. So I cannot guarantee you that, that uh, whatever localization does is, is literally counting the same states that I just showed you now. Um, okay, so there has been a lot of, uh, I mean, obviously a lot of literature on localization, um, also a lot of talks that we heard. So I will not say essentially anything else, but the fact that in, you, can, you can rewrite um, the twisted index, which is the, the object that essentially is due to, well, various kinds of black holes that I'll talk about. Um, but this is, so essentially this is the three-dimensional uh, twisted index on S1 times uh, Riemann surface. And it's very useful to, to work with this, uh, well, what I think originally was called beta potential, then uh, it's also the twisted superpotential of the 2D uh, theory. And uh, so this gives the, the better vacua. Uh, so you have, to, you have to solve this, um, then plug it in, in the original expression, so, so the Q, which is a complicated, uh, some matrix model. Um, I will go over, uh, not mention anything more precise about localization here. Uh, just the important thing that will be, uh, well, easy to, to, to see also uh, how, how you fit the, the super gravity answer. Uh, is that, so you have, at large n, there, there is simplification, you, you have one particular solution bar of these equations, and then this uh, better potential, it's, it's the answer for it on shell, so on this solution, is proportional to the, to the free energy of, the, say, of this given theory that you're considering on S3. That depends on these uh, fugacities that would be chemical potentials on, for the electric charges. Um, all right, and, and then the, the partition function has this uh, behavior. So it, it behaves as the, <coughs> as the derivative of the, you can say, essentially proportional to the derivative of the, of the S3 partition function of the theory with respect to the fugacities times the uh, magnetic charges. These are, well, up to some normalization that uh, it's uh, G Newton or uh, N to some power. These are the same magnetic charges as what the black hole sees. All right, and so this is uh, in half a slide, the answer from localization that I'll use, but uh, I, will not, uh, I will not care too much of these details. So I will just give you a few examples. To, to, to get the flavor of how things work. So for ABJM, this is the, the value of the S3 partition function, uh, depending on these fugacities. Um, and it scales as n to the three halves, as expected. And uh, this is, well, later on I'll give you a more precise answer of how it matches to, to gravity, but essentially 
already Val was talking about the, this uh, prepotential insuperability. And this is, so the, the S3 partition function is the, it has an exact match to, to, the, to the prepotential insuperability. Uh, where then these fugacities would, would be the, the sections in the, in the scalar, uh, in the vector multiplet scalar manifold. Uh, so th there is a precise match, and it, because of this formula, which will also be exactly mimicked on the gravity side, it's very easy to, it's, it's already enough to, to infer the, the match between, between gravity and field theory at, at the large end just by looking at this quantity and, and then comparing with the prepotential superiority. So this is, uh, this is the answer in, for, for ABGM uh, that can be reproduced and it bears some extra mass deformations that you can add and it still works the correspondence. Um, you can do the same for, for the massive 2A uh, theory on S6. So, so for, these are D2 uh, brains with the chern simons level K. Uh, and this is the answer there, so it's again, uh, well, it's N to the 5 thirds, uh, as expected for massive 2A, and then there's this three fugacity. So every fugacity means uh, essentially there is a U1 uh, flavor symmetry. Um, well, what, what I should, should mention is that there is a one particular constraint between these fugacities. So really, the number of fugacities is equal to the R symmetry plus the number of flavor symmetries. Um, and you can do that for, for black strings, which uh, you can always uh, look at them as from, from a lower dimensional point of view, again, as an ADS2 near horizon, because you can, you can uh, dimensionally reduce the near horizon from ADS3 to ADS2. So they fit in the same, uh, in the same category that I'm talking about. And from that point of view, the, the well, S3 partition function in, in a particular limit. Uh, this, is the, this is now n equal four super n uh, So these, we are talking about the, the, the three brains, but which are asymptotically ADS5 times S5. But as I said, upon further reduction on one extra dimension, uh, you would find uh, this not really precise to, to call it free energy on S3, but uh, let's uh, not, uh, think too much about this. <laughs> um, and, and these are, so all these, these uh, things, as I said, will match exactly to, to superiority. So there's, uh, well, so far quite a lot of evidence. You can, you can do better uh, in some cases that you have this universal twist RG flows. So you can already think from 10 and 11 dimensions and uh, analyze this, uh, some ADS2 uh, solutions essentially. Uh, there, it, lo it, it turns out that you don't even, so for some particular values of, of fugacities and, and that are related to the magnetic charges, essentially you're not switching on extra flavor symmetry, so there you do not, uh, you even have a further simplification and the, the um, uh, twisted index is matching exactly the S3 partition function. It's not uh, even up to, up to some derivative. So this is also, uh, done and understood. Um, there's also some evidence that, that other black holes will work out uh, more or less th this th in the same spirit. So um, some anomaly, you can match some anomaly coefficients of n equal four superangnus theory or, or the two comma zero theory in 60 to, um, to the entropy of rotating, uh, well, the gutowski rao black holes in ADS5 or the rotating uh, black holes in ADS7. So it looks like uh, this can, can be extended. And so all of these have near the horizon, it's again a sort of an ADS2 or a deformed uh, ADS2 uh, background. Uh, so they fall in the same category that I was talking about. I cannot give you a proper uh, partition function here though, however. So it, there is uh, still things to be understood on the future results. So, so there is no direct uh, um, identification of, of these formulas as, as counting some states in the field theory. However, um, there is a good chance that eventually someone will come up with the explanation, <laughs> let's say. 
Uh, and then there's already some results about, um, about the subleading corrections to the large end results. So some log end corrections have been computed numerically plus some, some other corrections, some numerical evidence for them. Uh, so you see that uh, it's already the direction that this is going is, is to go beyond large end where maybe it's more interesting because you do have also corrections in, in, on the gravity side to the Bekenstein Hawking entropy, of course. Um, so this is where I also want to go from here. But uh, if you have any questions on uh, these examples so far, it's, uh, I haven't done much, I just flashed the examples. Uh, all right, so now the question is how, how would you do the entropy at finite end? And the, well, the short answer is that we don't know uh, because to do that, I mean clearly the, the partition function, the supersymmetric partition function in field theory is well defined. Um, you can calculate it in principle, the, the matrix model is known. Maybe you, you people will develop uh, better tools to, to calculate it exactly. And they'll, they'll find the, the index, the supersymmetric partition function. This is, however, not necessarily the entropy because this, you always need this no cancellation between fermions and bosons assumption, which was true at the large end, but uh, Maybe one can come up with some arguments on why it is true at any order, but I will not use this for the rest of the talk. So, um, sorry. So, in any case, this is the, the, the statement. Here I have already plugged in, uh, I have written down this extra, um, what happens is that you always have this constraint between fugacities. So I have written down the, the microscopic supersymmetric uh, partition function in the microcanonical ensemble in a more suggestive way that I'll use later. Uh, but so in principle, the, the way to, to get to the exact entropy from here is to assume no, no cancellation and then uh, say that the macroscopic and the microscopic uh, degeneracy via, where ADS-CFT is equal, uh, then by some argument, guess that say that the, the supersymmetric um, partition function is the same as the real thermal non-supersymmetric partition function that in any case gives you a number of states and then say that this is the exact entropy. So um, this chain of, obviously there is a question mark here as I said, so um, and in principle, if you, if you have a quantum gravity, uh, known as quantum gravity calculation, you can test also uh, just this part of the equality, of course. But, so what I'll talk about and what super gravity localization does is to again use supersymmetry. So essentially, I do not need to, to explicitly uh, calculate this. I already know holographically that also this equality should hold. So, I, well, already up to some, some uh, potential, uh, you know, problems that Val mentioned, uh, whether, you know, all the degrees of freedom of the black hole are, you can find on the horizon or there are some extra here degrees of freedom. But so in any case, there should be some, some way in which uh, holographically there is, an, there is a microscopic uh, calculation, the supersymmetric partition function of the field theory that is equal to the supersymmetric, um, well, supersymmetric partition function on ADS2, essentially. So here I'm no longer, I, I, for this I do not need to assume any uh, cancellation between fermions and bosons. In the explicit examples that I have at large end, I can prove that, that there, you can already see that there is no cancellation, but I don't need to do it further, further than that. Uh, well, for, for, the purposes of, of what I'm going to say now. So the, per, the question, yes? Yes? Here, uh, ADS-CFT. By micro here, microscopic, I mean, so it's the, the, the field theory. So, 
Ah, oh, I'm just assuming ADS-CFT uh, duality. So, you know, at, at the right value so that ADS-CFT holds. So maybe here I can just put ADS-CFT on. on no, Well, one is gravity, the other is field theory. So it's the, the value of the coupling such that you have uh, the correspondence, right? Uh, so th the coupling constants and, and theories are different on these two sides, right? Okay, so why is it equal? Um, oh. You need to match them, of course. So you need to have the, the, the match between coupling constants correctly. So the, you know, the, the relation between G Newton and, and, uh, and let's say the rank of the gauge group. So I'm, here I'm just using standard ads CFT dictionary. Weak coupling in gravity and strong coupling in field theory, you mean? Or what? Uh, this is, so standard CFT says that weak coupling in gravity is strong coupling in field theory and the other way around, right? We know this is, this is uh, well, this is the, the twisted index. That's the point of it, right? Uh, the that's the index. Yes. Oh, here you mean, okay, okay. Yes, but this is why I'm using this extra piece. <laughs> I, I don't know how to calculate this. I'm, I'm not claiming I know. Uh, this is why I want to concentrate on this equality because this one, I, I don't know. I don't know this one, neither do I know this one. I only know this part. So, uh, yes. However, I, I want to claim that uh, for this question, what are the microscopic states that make up the black hole entropy? Um, also, this equality is enough, right? Because I'm also here I'm ca counting this, the same states that would make up the degeneracy. I'm just counting them with you know, different weights. So I'm counting, counting them supersymmetrically. However, in principle, if I could uh, have a, a grasp of what the states that I'm counting are, then I, then, you know, I, I do not necessarily need to know the quantum entropy. I'm okay to know the index in gravity, as long as I can also, well, if I come up with a way to tell you, okay, this, these are the, the states that, that give me this um, index on the gravity side, then you would say, okay, these are also the states, but in a, some different way of counting that give you the, the, the generosity of the black hole. So this is the, well, philosophically my point. Right, um, so okay, let me just repeat what, what I was saying. So uh, in field theory, it's the, this, the states that make up the black hole are kind of clear or way clearer. So at weak coupling, you can just go in the grand canonical ensemble, write down your Hamiltonian and enumerate the states and find the answer for the, for the index. Uh, this is, well, somewhat trivial, but gives you an idea of at least what the states are in, in the field theory. These are not uh, directly, you know, corresponding to, to, to the gravity states because they're a weak coupling in, in field theory. The strong coupling calculation v goes via necessarily so far via localization or some anomaly coefficient. So um, it doesn't go uh, explicitly through, through counting states. However, it gives, of course, uh, an integer. So in some more complicated way, uh, counts these states that, that at weak coupling we know how they look like, at strong coupling we know there is some ensemble that, that we don't know explicitly how it looks like, but we know that we can calculate via localization or anomalies. And this is uh, so far as much as we can hope for in field theory, but we can still say that uh, philosophically it's under, uh, under good control. Um, in quantum or, well, gravity in general, <laughs> I would say this is not at all under control because we can clearly you know, write down the Bekenstein Hawking entropy and match it. We can hope via the supergravity localization that Val explained. Well, also the pre Bernard Mintak explained yesterday. Um, you can hope to, to also calculate some, uh, whether it's an index or via some, some good uh, argument, calculate uh, the actual degeneracy. It doesn't mean that you know what the states that, that, that give you this degeneracy are. So, so at weak coupling, maybe we can hope for some gravity calculation that is uh, super gravity. That's a question mark. At strong coupling, it's uh, some 
proper string theory calculation that potentially you know, is defined properly only via ads CFT. So um, again, you're, uh, so far I, I don't know what to say. Uh, and what I want to emphasize here so far is that uh, the, the superiority localization as defined is in the microcanonical ensemble. And uh, so we can, we have some, some supersymmetric index for gravity. Um, however, the fact that it's in, micro in the microcanonical ensemble actually makes it um, more complicated in, for interpretation because uh, as I explained to you, the, actually the, in, in the field theory, the grand canonical ensemble is the one that you have a very, a very clear description of the states. As long as you go to the microcanonical, this, this, uh, this becomes much more complicated. It's some states at some given charge somehow, but, but explicitly the, the, the picture where you have a Hamiltonian that uh, you can write down the states and then you take the trace over the Hilbert space is in the grand canonical ensemble. So in a sense, I want to, to motivate uh, from, from this point of view the, what, I'll, what Val explained and I'll go through fast through it again is with the search for the grand canonical ensemble, which I believe we, we can say we, we also know how to write down now due to the superiority localization procedure. All right, so, um, so now to the superiority localization part, which you already heard, and so, so this is the formal definition. Um, we're working in Euclidean, so uh, let me just emphasize that this is uh, Euclidean ADS2. Uh, so it's formally the expectation value of a Wilson loop. Um, in reality, in the superiority localization, you, d you, you calculate, strictly speaking, the supersymmetric. So because you use localization, you use supersymmetric boundary recognition, so you're calculating the supersymmetric version of, of the Wilson loop. Um, and, and so the explicit approach that, that people did is to take the superiority theory, you already heard the near horizon geometry. Then uh, in some cases you can prove that the, the, the gravitational background is not, uh, is not fluctuating. In our case, we assumed it just from the start. Um, then, um, then essentially, so essentially what we did is uh, so far philosophically to just do supersymmetric localization on a curved background, but making sure that this curved background is a solution of superiority itself. So it's not just a randomly picked uh, background. And uh, so it's really the, the vector hypermultiplets that you that you perform localization on them. But these are the ones that are given by your superiority theory. So we are strictly in the bulk. Um, all right, this is, well, as again mentioned previously, explicitly this can be done together with, with all the subtleties taken care of uh, for the asymptotically Minkowski times T6 solutions. And there is a good progress for the Minkowski times uh, T2 times K3, so the compactifications on, on uh, torus times K3. Um, and there you do have an exact answer, um, which would be, you know, it would be very, very nice. If we can do the same for, for the symptotical ADS black holes, but uh, we are not there yet. And uh, so the conceptual issues that uh, Bernard was talking about in his talk and then this one loop determinant, possible non-compactness, the integration measure, these all things that we have not fully uh, looked at the moment. Uh, but I only neglect, neglect them completely now. So Val mentioned about them, but. Uh, so, okay. Uh, again, going through the slides very fast. So we have, uh, we used the conformal superiority formalism in the Euclidean version. There is the, the final multiplet, the vector multiplets, and the hyper multiplets. And upon gauge fixing, this is standard for Ankara superiority, but for the purposes of uh, localization, it's very useful to have the offshell formalism. Uh, then we used explicitly the, the well, the half BPS. So as I said, it's from n equal to two point is half BPS. It's the, the ADS2 near horizon that I mentioned in the beginning. It, corresponds to the super algebra SU 1 comma 1 slash 1. Uh, and then you can, I can just write down for you all those 
auxiliary and, and physical fields in, in the, the on-shell solution for in off-shell supergravity. And then you can, you can pick, as I said, this is the super algebra, you can pick particular localizing supercharge uh, that gives you, well, usual story equivariant localization. So, um, so then off-shell, as I said, the localization proceeds by assuming that gra gravity does not fluctuate. So then you find some vector multiplied fluctuations as, I, as, I, as Bao was explaining, you actually have proper functions which uh, makes things complicated, but hopefully, uh, well, hopefully this is not way too complicated and for the classical action, um, it, these um, functions drop out. So because of this extra constraint coming from the hypermultiplet uh, localization locus, actually the, the hypermultiplet serves to constrain the locus rather than allow for extra fluctuations but it's very useful because uh, this way we could, we could actually make sense of the, the whole uh, classical action and, and write down a nice expression. So there's this phi perp and phi plus that Val already introduced. We have these extra conditions. So note that even the, the gauge fields can fluctuate away from their uh, on shell value. So you localize, the, well, the localization locus allows for, for gauge fields, but they are, uh, so, as powers of R subleading uh, away from, from the boundary condition of ATS2. And uh, eventually you plug this in, you get uh, this classical action plus Wilson line. Uh, then we have, uh, we perform super, well, holographic renormalization because there is one piece that blows up as expected, but um, so we remove it directly and we, there is no finite counter term in this case. So this is the answer that you get in the end. And the full, well, if you, if you reinstate the, the Newton constant, then you also put uh, all the, you, you parameterize all, all your ignorance by putting an extra Z, which is the one loop, integration measure, all kinds of issues that, that come. Uh, then. These are all hidden here, so th this is the answer of, of the index of, in supergravity. And just a small comment, uh, if I would put, because here now it's very easy to, to add higher derivatives. So we have not put it because, we, we have not used them because all the, the um, ADS-CFT examples that we have, they are actually um, inside, so they're truncations of n equal to eight, so they do not receive higher derivative corrections in n equal to two, uh, but if you do, uh, consider more general, uh, more general theories, n equal to theories, you cannot, so if you have F terms for the people that know it, it's, it's a small remark, there's this extra piece that would enter in here. Um, there's also a large class of other high derivative terms that we don't know what it is the answer, so this is still open, the D terms. Uh, but for here, they will not play any role. So as again, Val mentioned, the saddle point evaluation well, in, in, this is Euclidean, so after weak rotation, exactly matches the already known um, attractor mechanism for ADS black holes in uh, like n equal to super gravity. And furthermore, just to, so to, to complete the, the ADS-CFT match, uh, I showed you uh, before the, the S3 partition function on ABJM, um, which, looked in the same way in terms of fugacities. Um, well, okay, here I have not put, uh, this is the prepotential, of course, when I, when I uh, evaluate the action, there would be the Newton constant coming in, so also the, the right end scaling will come in. So uh, essentially, uh, this, this is 11D on S7, this model, and this matches the, the, the functional dependence of the fugacities of ABJM. Then this is massive to on S6, yet again, Again, the match is exact. And this is uh, for the black strings that, that would uh, be in 5D or, or on the, upon further reduction on this one, you would get in, in 4D this sort of prepotential, which again matches. So essentially, uh, it's, it's very, you know, as ex everything works as expected at first sight. Uh, so now I, I want to also motivate um, why 
uh, we believe. So, so this is the, again, repeated for third or fourth time in, in the slides and many other times also last week. So this is how the, the well, up to a point what uh, localization, well, what, what, so, sorry, this is what localization should give you the, the grand canonical partition function. This is the micro canonical supersymmetric partition function. So I'm just doing the, the transformation here. And, and these are the, the fugacities that are constrained. And so our superiority localization result is pretty much the same, essentially. So you have the, the, the extra piece, Alexander transform with the, with the um, electric charges. Then you have, so this is essentially our, um, what I would call grand canonical ensemble. So this is, this is the answer that, well, this we have to, to calculate, of course, but also this, note that this is exact answer. So we only have the large gen of, of, the, of the partition function in, uh, in field theory. So essentially you can see that uh, you can just map directly the two answers. So as long as uh, this part matches this part, so as long as essentially we have the grand canonical match, we can always go to the micro canonical ensemble and write down the actual degeneracy in terms of electric and magnetic charges. But what I want to claim is that it is useful to have the grand canonical ensemble in superiority. And this is just, uh, you can read it off. This is just, uh, well, the classic, I mean, the, the classical, the expected answer uh, at leading, um, well, at leading, so this is the Bekenstein Hawking, if you want, piece. Um, and then, well, note, of course, that in the, after integration, this leading answer gives you also subleading corrections already, but, but uh, subleading in the microcanonical ensemble from the grand canonical point of view, this is just a leading piece. Um, all right, so, so the point is that I can and I want to think of this, uh, this quantity, which is yet to be properly evaluated, but uh, of this quantity that you can define via the, the microcanonical uh, superiority localization. Um, as the grand canonical um, ensemble in superiority. And from there on, I, I, I would like to again ask myself, uh, what, what are the states? So here I, I want to, to think or speculate, because my next slide is speculations, um, whether we can learn more about the actual states that make up the black hole using the grand canonical partition function in, in gravity now, not in field theory. So if we, if we assume that, uh, well, this whole example makes sense, uh, the superiority localization is not just a trick and we can really define the, the grand canonical ensemble this way, then the next, the next question is whether we can, we can expect a, a match between on the field theory and on the gravity side, not just between the final answer of the partition function, but also of the states in the grand canonical ensemble. So the states that in some way I, I can write down at least in weak coupling on field theory, whether I can also write down uh, states in the gravity that, that would mention, that would match. Uh, in principle, this is, a, I guess, an unclear question. Uh, one thing that um, I guess people in, in, in the football, working in the football proposal claim is that there should be explicit classical geometries that, that this grand canonical partition function counts for you, and these ones should match to the microstates that uh, I can write down in field theory. So that's a question that is open here. Uh, I'm not sure it's clear in the asymptotically flat solutions, of course, but here it's certainly more unclear. But what I want to, to mention is that maybe the answer is to be found in the Euclidean theory where you know, and there are examples in literature where you can actually do more. So you, you have a sort of, uh, um, bigger parameter space of solutions that in the Lorentzian case would, would just map to one solution, but in the Euclidean you have a, a whole, uh, whole parameter spaces of solutions. So somehow it, it is, it is uh, plausible that uh, you can do that also in the, in the gravity case um, in, in for ADS black holes that, that I'm talking about. It's an open question, of course. Um, so, but this is just, that's how I essentially want to finish. Um, 
conclude with just mentioning what are the, the open problems. So clearly, one has to properly calculate, finish the superiority localization program. Uh, that hopefully hints at how to do the matrix model on the field theory side. Um, and hopefully also use some proper math to describe this. Um, then, as I mentioned, maybe search for, for this sort of uh, classical or some geometries that would really make up the black hole entropy from the gravity point of view, not just the field theory. Um, of course, one should, should fully do all the, all the examples that are there to understand everything. So there are more dimensions, you can add rotation and exhaust the supersymmetric possibilities and eventually, hopefully, go beyond supersymmetry in some way that is completely obscure at the moment. Uh, so that's all I wanted to say. Thanks for the attention.